So now our first question today comes from Charles. Now, I'm going to read the whole question to you, but there's an answer I want to give. But he said, Charles says this, uh, what do you think about psyllium husks? I'm a naturally lean guy and I train for readiness and Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And thanks for writing Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I don't cut weight for anybody, anything, but my body naturally tries to keep fighting size. I recently lost weight, a vague six pack before and after due to stressful professional life, but I'm starting uh, to start eating more and get back on more strength training to get it back. I have always liked psyllium husk for smooth bowel movements, but now I'm afraid to take it because the internet is swamped with people saying that one can eat more freely as uh, psyllium husk absorbs many calories. I, you know, I'm, my, my knowledge of biology, physiology, human anatomy, and the work I've done with a lot of people would make me wonder how we still, in this day and age, talk about foods that magically absorb calories. Um, it certainly speeds up, uh, fiber speeds up transit, but we now know with the gut biome research that fiber does much more than just give you a poop. Uh, sorry, gentle listeners, for me being so graphic. Uh, but let's continue. Um, I don't want to lose calories. Uh, I, I'm what one used to be. Oh, he is one who used to be called a hard gainer. Do you have thoughts on psyllium husk? Well, uh, <clears throat> I use sugar free orange flavored Metamucil, and I did. Oh, this would be a couple of years ago, the two-week Metamucil challenge. I don't get any money for selling Metamucil, but uh, one of the things uh, I've been kind of chasing since the 1970s is fiber. Uh, I read an article in Reader's Digest, and it had to be the early 1970s. It was on uh, what later became the F-Plan diet, but not the F-Plan diet you find in books. The, the, I, don't, I wish I could find the original that I had. Uh, and the argument was one of the reasons that certain people on the planet were healthier than most Americans. And it's funny because in the 70s, we still weren't as hard a shape. <laughs> 50 years ago, we were in better shape than we are now. I'll just say that straight up. Uh, and uh, you just have to look at my high school yearbook pictures or my class pictures. Uh, just look at the, the results in track and field uh, for my team. Uh, and then look at the athletes we had. Uh, we, we are not nearly as healthy as, as we were, I think. I, I, you can argue with me, and I, and I would accept any proof you have. So the first thing I'd like to say is I, I think fiber has a much more nuanced role in overall body health and longevity than we thought 50 years ago when we just thought it was a more efficient way to, to kind of get the digestive and elimination systems uh, moving quicker. And, and, and it goes back to your, your poopy question, if you've been watching your Ted Lasso. It's just poopy. Now I think we're starting to get a sense that the fiber, the psyllium husks, the, veg the, the, the vegetable matter, the, 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 the skin of your apple, all that stuff has far more value than what we ever thought back then, which is completely normal. That's the way uh, knowledge of any field goes. You think this at first, and then you realize later that it's much more simple and complex at the same time. Um, you, you do ask a good question in secondarily that I wanted to talk about. So first off, I think there's great value in adding psyllium husk to your day. I mean, it's when I wake up, and I don't, I don't really talk about this as much, and I, and I really should, uh, one of the first things I do in the morning when I wake up is I do drink a glass of the orange flavored, sugar free Metamucil, uh, and I, then I start with my coffee. Uh, it has no calories, which is which is part of what my goal is, but it's also just it's just a part of my morning process. Um, in the mornings, you know, I use a tongue scraper, I floss my teeth, I brush, I use mouthwash, I put on. Um, I put on uh, oil volet that's got the SPF 15 or something on it. 
because uh, at my age and anybody's age, it's probably a good idea to have some a low level sunscreen on as you start your day. I, you know, I clean up as best I can, uh, trying not to smell any, you know, trying to, you know, shower up and look pretty and go on with my day. So that's just part of my morning ritual. Um, I don't think it. I don't think it hurts. In fact, I noticed when I was doing my big uh, uh, bulking program. Uh, you know, when I first met uh, Dick Notmar, um, I noticed that as I emphasized the, the fiber, I seem to grow more. I can't explain it. Only to think the only my only thought is if you're if your gut biome is in good shape, you probably are too. One thing I worry about when people label themselves hard gainers, uh, you're going through a, a stressful professional life. Um, you are also, um, you know, doing a Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, it could be that you're just, you're just doing too many things uh, and that is impacting uh, uh, gaining strength and size. I never did like the phrase hard gainer. I because you just don't know. I remember when one of my friends, I won't say who it was, labeled himself a hard gainer. I thought to myself, this guy is one of the most naturally gifted people I've ever been around, uh, but he was drug free. And so he was, he was training like he read in those certain magazines. Uh, he was doing those workouts. So one month he would be doing, you know, 22 sets of forearms three days a week you know, which is a lot of forearm work. And then the next month there'll be an article about, you know, doing your deltoids. And he would do a, you know, a massive deltoid workout twice a week. Well, he was just leaving it on the shelf. I later found out that the person writing those records told, uh, uh, workouts, sorry, told me that um, <laughs> the magazine took the pictures. And when the editor said, here are the best pictures to use, they would make up <laughs> workouts designed on the best pictures of the photo shoot. Um, what happens with a lot of people, and Charles, uh, I, I, it could be with you too, is that you you kind of go down that road of, okay, you can't you can't you can't look like Mister Universe and be a good marathoner and be good at your sport and be and be and be and be. Okay, that's the whole chasing rabbits thing that I say way too much. When it comes to people who are struggling, the first thing I usually do is I get them on three sets of eight, you know, with a minute rest. And again, uh, thanks to Dave, he, he gave me some feedback uh, on, on training it this way. Three sets of eight with a minute rest, you know, do a push, do a pull, do a hinge, do a squat. Um, after two weeks, you know, do three sets of 10, two more weeks, three sets of 12. And then after that, if you're doing bench press, go to incline. If you're do, uh, after incline, do decline. After decline, do military. And you can keep doing this on and on. There is some variation, but not a lot. Now, in the three sets of 12, you might have to change your rest periods. But uh, it's, I tell you, it's, it's, <laughs> it's eye-opening. Uh, three sets of 12 with a minute rest with a, with a decent load. Those last that reps, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, those, those last you know, high 30s reps that you're doing, that's, it's brutal. When I say high 30s, you're doing three sets of 12. So that's 36 reps. So, you know, on your last set, you're doing 12. So it's the accumulation of those first two that are getting to you. So when I said high 30s, 33, 34, 35, 36, that's, that's what I meant. Um, and when it comes to eating, a lot of hard gain, <laughs> people who are hard gainers, uh, that you, you, uh, many of them fall down the supplement uh, route. Um, I just got to tell you what we were talking about the other night, Mike Warren Brown and I, uh, I still think the more, 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 um, um, diet, you know, <laughs> more protein, more fiber, more fish oil, more water, uh, fish oil, uh, seems to really help my athletes are trying to bulk up. Um, I know that a lot of people are pushing back on fish oil now, but boy, I tell you, it's inexp it is very inexpensive, and you can buy the best of the best fairly inexpensively. And I do think uh, if you read uh, the Omega Zone book, I think the author pushes it a little bit too much. Uh, you know, it's the answers all questions. In Mass Made Simple, I have a whole bunch of on why it works. Um, 
uh, I just I just find it to be a good supplement. Uh, you could certainly also just eat fish at every meal, like I've been trying to do. Um, I tell you one thing. Uh, yeah, you know, it. I was given some advice a while ago to always keep uh, sardine tins. That's what we called them growing up. But uh, and with the the ones that have the little opener, and uh, when you get hungry, when you're trying to bulk up, you eat a can of sardines. Of course, you know. <laughs> your mileage may vary. Uh, I've done it a few times, and I got to tell you, folks, uh, that that uh, you you are satiated. <laughs> a can of sardines will stop you from being hungry for a while. Um, I like your question. I think it's good. So yes, I I think there's real value in fiber supplements, especially if they're um, you know reasonable. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of varieties. I'm, I'm not sure the, the difference. I know that some of them are basically one step from sand and some are psyllium husks. Um, I, you know, in my career, I, 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 I've gone to the one that gives me the less long-term distress. Um, for those who've ever taken fiber supplements, um, <laughs> there are some issues, uh, for example. <laughs> I don't want to be too graphic, but basically uh, you get the walking farts and uh, that's, uh, and I didn't think I'd say that on my podcast, but there you go. All right. Well, hey, great question. And thank you. Um,